very first thing you should do on every single sales call. And what that is to explain it, I need to explain to you some context on really what makes sales calls work in the first place, okay? So if you've watched my other videos, you probably know there's seven beliefs your prospect needs to have to buy. There's pain, doubt, cost, desire, money, support, trust. Pain is they have to have a problem or an unfulfilled desire. Doubt is they have to have an inability to fix that desire or pain on their own. Cost is there has to be a consequence if the problem goes unfixed. Consequence of changing nothing. Desire is the compelling payoff of fixing the problem. Money is the resources and willingness to fix the problem. Support is people around them, close to them, or stakeholders in the decision, support them in fixing the problem. Trust is that they trust your methodology to fix the problem. They believe it's unique, different, superior than other things they tried in the past. So the reason I tell you that is you can see those latter six beliefs, doubt, cost, desire, money, support, trust, those latter six are all predicated on pain. So did you see, and maybe rewind it so you can see how I explained it. Every single one of those you cannot even establish until you establish the pain. So back to the question of this video, what's the very first thing you should do on a sales call? It's establish the pain. Okay, and remember, there's two types of pain. There's a problem and an unfulfilled desire. A problem is, here's the greatest example, a problem takes somebody from subpar to par. So a problem is essentially, hey, my doctor said if I don't lose weight, I might not be around you know, to see my kids grow up past 10. That's a, that's a freaking problem. Unfulfilled desire is, yeah, I'm 10% body fat, but like I would just feel really good if I was at 7%, right? I would like how I looked in the mirror and how I could show up to pool parties if I was at 7% body fat, or I got a figure competition I wanna do. You see the difference there. A problem is, man, I can barely pay my bills. A unfulfilled desire is, yeah, you know, I'm making $15,000 a month, like it's enough money, but I wanna make $100,000 a month. So you see the difference? The very first thing we wanna do is establish what is the pain, whether that be a problem or unfulfilled desire, on the sales call. How do we do that? Well, if you watch my previous video, we'll put it here, uh, talking about the introduction of the call, which is rapport and frame. The, the very thing we end that with, which starts our information gathering phase, where we ask all the questions, discovery, the very question we end that phase with is, okay, cool, so what would you say right now is your biggest challenge in the business or like what's not working at the level you truly feel like it could be that it should. Maybe you sell something that helps people build wealth or you know, whole life insurance, something like that. Gotcha, so when it comes to like your investing in your wealth building and your portfolio, I guess like the um, best place to start is what would you say is I guess like your biggest challenge in, you know, in that or like what's not working at the level it truly feel like it could be that it should. And even say it with that tonality, again, there's a couple things I'm doing there. Number one, I'm, uh, I'm having trouble like finding the words I need to use, right? And this is something, again, I said in a different video, but I, I give credit to Jeremy Miner. I did not, you know, didn't even really notice these types of things until I saw him do it one time. So you could see when, I, when, I, when I'm going through that question, I'm not saying, so what's your biggest challenge? Like, what's not working? Don't say that. Because a lot of times they'll say, well, not, you know, I don't have, nothing's not working. A lot of prospects will do that to be defensive. So you want to kind of say like, so what's like your, um, biggest uh, challenge, you see how I say challenge? That softens it dramatically. And a lot of times they're gonna wanna help you, right? It's like almost like there's this, it taps into this human need to like help the person. And then I soften it at the very end, I say, or like, you know, what's not working at a level you truly feel like it could be that it should. So that softener along with the tonality, you always get a great answer to that question, okay? Now, if for whatever reason, that, like they don't give you a straight answer to that, just say, you know, if it's a business situation, I'll say, gotcha, like, well, what do you think like the constraint is that's keeping you from doubling your business? Or what do you think the constraint is that's keeping you from scaling to, you know, an extra 20 to 30% growth this year? Another thing you can do, sometimes like maybe it's a new opportunity. They wanna start an online business for the very first time. So when you ask, you can't ask what's the biggest challenge with your online business. What you need to ask in this situation is gotcha. So I guess like the best place to start is, um, you know, what, what's the reason you reached out? Like what, what has you considering potentially um, starting X, Y, and Z online business in the first place? Because I want to see that initial key point of motivation. And another way you can elicit the pain is you can you can go with what they want and what's keeping them from getting it. So you can say. Gotcha, so like I guess like the best place to start is like ultimately what's the goal? And then you kind of elaborate on that a little bit, you ask some probing questions, then you say, cool. So like I guess like, what do you think is the biggest thing right now that's keeping you from getting it? 
Hey guys, we'll get back to the content in a second, but I have a quick favor to ask. We don't run any ads or really do a lot of promotions on this channel at all, but the one thing that would really help us out if you're getting value from this is if you could share it on your socials. So specifically sharing it on your Instagram story through a screenshot or just pressing share and really sharing it on any platform. The main way we plan to grow this isn't through ads, it's through word of mouth. So if you're getting value, that's the one thing you could do. Make sure you tag me on Instagram at Cole Thomas Gordon. And with that said, back to the content. So just remember, you need to identify the pain as soon as you can because the other six beliefs on the call are predicated on finding that in the first place. Now, once you identify it, I'm going to give you a few pro tips. You want to understand it, okay? So like the first thing is identify and isolate, then it's understand the pain. How do you understand it? Very basic probing questions. Tell me more. When you said blank, what do you mean specifically? How do you mean specifically? Can you elaborate? Super basic stuff, right? But you know, you just gotta tap into your natural human being skills here and do it. Then here's, an, here's more of a ninja one. The third one is so we have isolate, understand. The third step is chunk down. So chunking down is assigning a specific instance or a specific example. It's taking the abstract and making it concrete. So that could be assigning a number to it. That could be uh, giving an example. So think about it this way, it's like, if you're trying to paint a portrait in your mind and the prospect's helping you paint that portrait of their situation, you have to have specificity. There has to be something that's concrete. So it happens in one of two ways. If it's usually a business situation, like let's say their problem is lead generation, I'll say, gotcha. So just to understand what's going on, how many leads did you generate last week? Gotcha, and out of those leads you generated, how many were qualified? And then I'll, I'll do some more number gathering because people will like to tell stories. If you ask them open-ended questions, they'll tell you stories. If you ask them for the numbers, they'll tell you the truth. It's a very, very key one right there. Let's say you're in a situation, and, and by the way, it's not just business. You can do this for dating. Let's say it's a guy who wants to get a bunch of girls. Gotcha, well, how many dates did you go on last month? Okay, let's say it's weight loss. Uh, gotcha, so like, um, how much do you weigh right now? And then I'll show you what to do with weight loss in just a second. So you, you wanna assign numbers to it in any situation that you can, but then what you wanna do, if you can't get numbers, you wanna get an example. So here's the best question. Can you give me a specific example? You know, not rocket science, but you gotta ask it, okay? Let's say, okay, how much do you weigh right now? Okay, cool. So right now, like you said, you know, you've been kind of plateaued for the last, uh, you know, four or five years in terms of not being able to lose weight past 220. Um, can you give me a specific example of like, for instance, walk me through exactly what you ate yesterday. And then maybe later on the call, you find out that, oh, well, like the biggest, like I eat clean a lot of times and I fall off and then I'm inconsistent. Okay, can you walk me back? Like, can you give me an example of the last time where you were really good on a diet and you fell me off? Like, take me back to that moment. Walk me through what happened. So you see how I'm taking, oh, I'm inconsistent to concrete. So think about it this way. I can't paint a portrait of inconsistency. What I can paint a portrait of is exactly what happened when they were good for their diet on three weeks and they went on vacation and this happened and they're, you know, their, their wife wanted to go to this restaurant and the restaurant had all these desserts and then, you know, you feel like, oh, if I just broke it. So you see how that's like a specific example? Now, why is that important? Because when they tell you exactly what happened and they have to relive that experience and re-narrate it to you, what's gonna happen is they're going, all of the emotions associated with that experience, which are probably for that person who was inconsistent on their diet, emotions of pain, guilt, shame, all of that stuff. All of that is gonna come back to the surface by them explaining to you what happened, you know, last time they had that painful situation. And guess what? All those emotions coming to the surface are emotions of change, okay? So, first thing you wanna go over on your sales calls is you wanna isolate the pain. Then you wanna understand it. Then you want to uh, isolate, understand, chunk it down. Hopefully that helps guys. If you wanna see the full sales process, uh, there's a video you could click above.